What's going on, guys? You're watching Everyday Struggle. <laughs> I'm Nadeska here with Wayno and Academics. Wayno, fresh from All Star Weekend. Academics yeah. with the quiet storm voice this morning. My voice was a little bit gone. I've been trying <laughs> to say no. Oh, stop it. But the last day to make sure I could at least shout a little bit on here. Wait, wait, no, you're at All Star Weekend, my nigga? Yeah, just for a day. Just I went for, for a day. day. This thing is everywhere. Everywhere. By the way, I hosted, um, we're going to talk about the album later, but I hosted A Boogie's album release party. Wayno did show up. He was, there. he was there in New York with me. It was mm -hmm. like around Chinatown. Then that was you went not to, Chinatown, dog. That was a I, Soho. I don't know, bro. I just got it's an address, bro. I just time. Uber. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. He's, he's so like... Anyway, you went you went to All-Star Weekend after? Dog, you did that on Wednesday. Bro, it felt like it was like three days. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was but Thursday. I that was Thursday. It was Thursday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, Wayno, you be doing a lot. You move about a lot. This it's is amazing. international Wayno. I don't know really what's is. going on with this I, I went. I, I tried to go to the uh, slam dunk contest and everything. I didn't get any tickets, but I just went to a few events. I was running around with a few friends, you know? Okay. Did you watch anything? I like how he says like it's casual. It is casual. Today. It is casual for him. Oh, cool. It's another weekend. You know, like, you know, the Rock Nation secret, secret bunch. <laughs> like, I was there. Uh, like, God damn it, bro. Wayno does way more. Like, I be going to chill. Anyway, it's all good. You don't be going anywhere. But right. uh, did I, you watch you? it? No, 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 no you doing? nothing. Mm -mm. I apologize for missing the A Boogie listening. I know yeah. I promised you I would so come. So what were you I'm sorry. doing? I'm sorry. I want to know. It was a long day. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to wrap right there. Did you guys watch any of the games this weekend? I saw like you, the second half of the dunk contest. Nadeska, you could tell them you were doing your home improvement oh, projects. HGTV Nadeska, bro. She yeah. stays busy on the weekends. I saw everything. I watched everything this weekend. I chose. I came back Sunday and just sat. But what did you guys think about the dunk contest? I was... I, I don't understand why the hell they had Chadwick Boseman as a judge. That makes absolutely no sense. What, because he's Black Panther, he could be a fucking judge of of a dunk contest? Like, it, I don't know. It made no sense to me. It made sense to me because it shows just where the NBA and just, like, where things that aren't meant to be, like, legit competition. Yeah. Like, the, the dunk contests and things like that aren't, even though, you know, like, we do look at, like, oh, shit, Vince, you, Vince Carter won the competition, and we kind of look at it as some somewhat competitive. Mm -hmm. It's really about, like, you know, the hoopla, the hype, and really the people who you could bring in as judges and yeah. people who you could have there to even have reactions. Right. So... Yeah. Well, seems like Dwayne Wade was feeling the heat as a judge this weekend. Mm -hmm. But uh, so before we left last week, we asked you guys to send us your top five picks, your all-star rappers, because Akin Wayno did theirs. Uh, we want to run through some of those, starting with They Doubt Me. Uh, we've got Drake, Meek, J. Cole, Tory Lanez, and Roddy Rich. Mm -hmm. Tory, I don't think, was on either of your uh, lists. Right. I could see, I, 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 I fuck with this list. Uh, salute to um, Hertz Mega. I could see Tory Lanez being what they call in the NBA a swing player, someone who you know could play, you know, depend on his, depend on how the game is going, like different positions. Kind of. Right. All right. This next one, Drake. I think he's gonna be on everyone. The baby, J Cole, Quavo, and mm. Meek. Quavo also didn't show up on your uh, list. Oh, and Young M A in the sixth spot. Mm, that's that's, that's an interesting. That's Okay, so as I keep going, I see some of you just, again, completely... Wait, wait, wait. Right before I mention that, because I've been, again, for any anyone who also watches not only Everyday Show, but watches uh, Narcos, I was about oh, to say, this already? motherfucker Quavo yeah. shows up on my favorite show. Just oh, he's like, in it? Yeah, Quavo's I, in Narcos. Someone yeah. told me this was like, yo, Quavo's in Narcos. And I was like, yo, mm. you're shitting me. There's no black people in Narcos. Right. <laughs> Get out of here. We're watching Pablo Escobar and like some other niggas. And honestly, he showed up on that. Oh, so I just want to Looking like 2020 and 1985. <laughs> like, look at that shit. Was, I mean, Did I was... see that? Yeah, I was watching it yesterday. I was happy to see it. Like, it wasn't the best acting, but <laughs> I was just like, that's a win for Quavo. Like, that was dope for them. Marcos. And DJ Durell, he was there too. And the other dude who had the floral shirt on the BT Awards, I was trying to jump. Um, <laughs> jump he was definitely there too. He was there too. He was there too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The other dude. <laughs> um, all right, so next is we got, okay, you guys definitely didn't take any of our criteria seriously. You're like Wayno, Kendrick Lamar, <sighs> J.I.D., Danny Brown, Denzel Curry, and Roddy Rich. Kendrick hasn't put out music in a minute, so I don't know how he's on this list, but he's an all-time all-star, mm, of course. List. I'm not going to knock this list. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Maybe it's one. Of, maybe that's the Detroit Pistons. Maybe the Pistons that won that championship. Hey, non-flashy. Like we, we like the Drakes and the who and the big superstar names. But like we've seen really good teams prosper that had a lot of people that didn't really have the biggest egos because they weren't the biggest superstars. Mm -hmm. But they had all the fundamentals. So I'm not knocking this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you again are talking like 
All time. We were talking 12 months, but fine. Yeah. Uh, all right, last one. We'll do J. Cole, Pusha T, Drake, Benny the Butcher. Shout Who's on my now. list? K. Dot <laughs> in sixth place. Oh, no, we still have one more. Drake, Future, the Baby, Meek Mill, Roddy Rich. All right, so we got a couple names that keep. Oh, six man, Rick Ross. Interesting. Mm. It would be cool to have people debate this, man. Yeah. That was cool, though. That was. I, I think that was a dope topic. That was fun. Just off the cuff, we have to get to the point where we get two like fans to debate against each other. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, we try it at ComplexCon, and everyone is shy once the camera turns on. Yeah, that's yeah. what we realize. We'll see though. Yeah, or they Everybody pushing, they, or they pushing their right? their mixtape or some shit. Kept running into that. All right, so let's catch up on what we missed over the weekend. Last week, actually, we didn't talk about this. Was the five-year anniversary of Drake's. Mixtape. If you're reading this, it's too late. This was a great project, but of course it caused a lot of controversy, notably between Drake and Meek and Quentin Miller just landed on the wrong side of all of this. So when he came to the show a couple years ago, he definitely told us his side of the story, but on the anniversary, he did hop on Instagram to reflect on some of the not so good memories, uh, including of course Meek, he said, quote, blowing up his spot. And then he went on to explain how this actually destroyed his relationship with Don Cannon and DJ Drama as well. Take a look. Yo, so, you know, a lot of people have been uh, congratulating me and sending me messages and shit about uh, the five-year anniversary of If You're Reading This and shit. And, you know, I look on socials and I see, like, producers and, you know, other people that were involved with the artists and they get to talk about how proud they are of the shit, you know. And, you know, it's different for me. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have the good memories about it that everybody has. You know, my good memories were all murdered, you know what I'm saying? Like, the day... Uh, Meek Mandela, you know, y'all, y'all buying that bullshit since he came out of jail, like he's, whatever. But the day he, you know, put my name out there, you know, and it just blew up my whole spot. In the confusion of that shit, you know, I, me and, and DJ Drama and Cannon, like that whole side, we had, our ties were severed because of that shit because it was just so much confusion and everybody was trying to find out whose fault was it and this and that like y'all just don't know what them phone calls all right so towards the end of the clip uh he does ask record labels and artists to take a chance on him we know that he's definitely been releasing music for the past few years are you guys surprised to hear that i don't know so many relationships have not been mended for quentin at least since drake and meek obviously have made up since then um i would like to hear what we know okay so uh, I watched uh, this clip and then I went back like, you know, to when everything happened and I started watching a lot of his interviews, right? Mm-hmm. And um, with Quentin, I feel a little bit sorry for him, you know, because he got, he got put in a tough position, but he also put himself in that position as well. There's a lot of shit that people don't know that it was alleged that he like gave up the songs himself and then he took some bread and and like he took some bread to not talk about it and then um i just i feel like he tried he tried to get hot off of it too hmm. like he did a ton of interviews after this shit happened and the whole thing was that's all anybody wanted to talk to him about was that situation but he tried to push his music through that i think if he would have just stayed quiet Cause he didn't really say anything. Like he, if you look at it all, all he did was talk about how he got beat up in the Nike store, or I bled in Nike. I take pride in that shit, and this, that, and third. And I think he thought that being quiet about the situation was gonna get him more notoriety. If he would have just kept quiet, period, he'd have been good. Cause nobody really knew who he was. I mean, hmm. it, it, it just. I feel him like, yeah, it's a, it's a bittersweet moment. The anniversary comes up, everybody's celebrating, but your life, like, then that sh- that was the start to him putting out. Mu- I mean, trying to put out music, not being able to do that. Him getting jumped, he lost a leg. Like that, there's no correlation between the two. But this was all in one time span, so of course, it all ties back to that one moment. But I, I just felt like he tried to get hot in it, and hmm. you know, he he did try to get hot, but he caught the the, the short end of the stick. I mean, I guess in his defense, most people would have tried to get hot for it because that's just what people do. But I see your point, though. He didn't too. talk about it, though. It's yeah. like, what was the point? Like, you you, hmm. you you, you, started doing interviews and press and all that. And realistically, he's very talented. Right. And he, and he wants to be respected as an artist, but I don't think he's that good of an artist. Hmm. I think that he's a he's a great writer. And how Ak always says the it thing, he doesn't have an it thing about him. Interesting. He so, really doesn't. Okay, so Ak, do you agree? I think I know how you feel about his music, do you think it's how he handled the situation after the fact? 
that derailed things for him? I'm gonna be honest with you. And there's very few times in when we're dealing with things in terms of people talking about their career in this music industry that you get a gut check moment about just humanity. And that this is one of them. For me, I was like, damn. Like just even hearing him reflect on, hey, my life went here mm -hmm. and really I'm here. Or honestly, like I, like everyone has that dream of making it and he was really, spe it's a really long video by the way. Yeah. But he was spelling out his dream of making it and if you really watch it, it feels like it was robbed of him. I'm gonna address Wayno's first point. I don't know any way he could have played it besides how he did it. In terms of you saying, he should have been quiet all the way. Mm -hmm. he, he never voluntarily said anything, ever. When the rumors came about, and if we're being honest, supposedly Meek was told by either Drama or somebody else mm -hmm. that, hey, there's this kid that was sending records to Drake, and he named him in a tweet. Quinn never came out. He, we had probably two pictures of the guy then. Mm -hmm. He never said, oh, hey, paparazzi, this is me. He never said, yo, let me tweet us who was up. He actually stayed hidden. He was trying to say, okay, the most popular rapper, Drake. Drake forced him at that point. You have to imagine his force. Again, I don't know for a fact, but he put out a letter. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the first thing he ever did. He put out a letter saying, hey, what, yo, hey, I have some contributions, but please don't knock this guy. Like, I ain't, I'm not his ghostwriter, whatever, whatever. And honestly, like, in, in his position, would you not put out that letter? Would you just stay quiet? Again, with if he stays quiet, it hold on. If he stays quiet with the reference tracks, which he didn't leak, right? With those reference tracks being out, and he stays quiet about the process, and he just goes, it looks worse on Drake. So he writes this letter. It's it almost absolves Drake. Hey, listen, I work with someone who who he's my idol, mm -hmm. and I, I absolve him or. All your accusations that I wrote all these records for him is not true. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. If anyone could point to any press, any tweet he did, I would be like, "You're right in terms of that." He picked a side. Look, look, look. He, he picked a side. He picked a side. Listen, listen. I'm, a ghost, working, oh, wait, 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 I'm so working for the guy. A ghost writer mm -hmm. is a ghost. What is the word ghost? Something that doesn't exist, right? That's a ghost. He now, the records got out. He puts out a letter that says. No, I, I, you know, I didn't do it. The thing was, Meek wanted him to co-sign that he, that he wrote the records. But so, if you're a ghostwriter, like to your point, right? You're supposed yeah. to stay hidden. But if someone forces your hand and pulls the curtain, then what do you? Wait, no, write wait, a no. letter. Wait, 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 I'm not in. He, so he writes a letter in defense of Drake, right? He, go ahead. What you about to say? Wait, wait, no. He says it. I'm working warehouse jobs and temp jobs. Yeah. Okay. Somehow, I happen to get in the studio and my and, and what I'm doing gets the attention of the biggest rapper. Mm -hmm. I don't know meat mill from a can of paint. Right. This is the only person that's my connect to the music industry. And you're telling me if this now is now a media firestorm, everybody cares, I'm supposed to be neutral and not pick a side? I'm not saying... The guy, hold on, hold on. But, Even yeah. though, and by the way, Funk Flex said this. Mm -hmm. Funk Flex said he was getting 5000 a month as a stipend from Drake. Not mm -hmm. a lot. But that's what he was getting, bro. He doesn't know me, Mel. That's I'm, not. I'm not saying. Aside. I'm just saying. But look. Yo, it's, but it's wait, like, wait, wait, wait. But look, when he puts out the letter, and then we hear the reference tracks, mm -hmm. it just makes him look as if if Meek said he looked like a liar, you look like a liar too. No, because you're saying that you're not. Yo, I haven't given. I've never given him nothing. We get Rico. I think that was the the biggest thing for Meek was the Rico shit. We get Rico. We get. Um, running through the six with my woes, ten bands, and then they said that it, he that there was a reference track for Bless too, for the for the for the hook for Bless as well. So you saying that you never did nothing, and then we start hearing the the references after the the letter comes out. So it just looks like it made him look it made himself look like a liar. I'm not mad at him for picking Drake's side. I'm just saying that once you pick you a side, it, okay. yeah, absolutely. I'm just saying that like, once you pick a side, you have to stay on it. And once you pick a side, you have to deal with the consequences of the side you picked. Right. Mm. Now, in the in the end, right, in the end, that's why I feel empathy for him because it didn't work out. Meek and Drake got cool again. They did going bad. They mm. they having fun. 
if he n had he never done a letter now, I, I get. But it. you don't feel like he was pressured to put out that letter. Man. I mean, yeah, he was pressured to put out Yo, a letter, man. but he still got to make a choice for himself. But man. you would say no hold to Drake on, though at that man, the honestly, position in your life. I don't know. Life? I would never be in a position Yo, like a nigga. No, no, like no. Him. I feel like you lack humanity if you don't hear that and think about how things have played out and come up and leave with this opinion. Right. That Meek, Drake, even drama sacrificed this nigga. That was all wrong. Okay. No, hold on. But but the least culpable person was him. Yeah, and, and, and we're sitting here, that, that's why when I hear you say... Casualties feel, of war, bro. It feel like, it feel like you're throwing certain criticisms to him where I'm like, no, Drake probably forced him to make sure that letter got out to save his own legacy. Then, <laughs> then whether it was true or not, Meek wanted him to write for him, it, whether it's true or not, yeah. then they beat him up. The problem like, is nobody... <laughs> listen, it, it's fucked up what happened to Quentin Miller, but the problem then is... Then with drama, by the way, yeah. when with drama, like, you gotta imagine, Drake ain't gonna trust you or drama anymore because the reference tracks get leaked out of the studio that drama owned. So Drake is looking at you like, did you leak it or drama leaked it? And even if you're the upcoming rapper saying, I did not leak it, bro, like, I'm, I'm accomplishing my dreams by working with you. Drake no longer trusts you. Okay, that all last cool, right? Like this guy's hard. <laughs> like, like, no all last, all last, oh all last cool, my nigga. Right, but it's like, all right, he did all this. That, it didn't save it, and we still heard Man, the but tracks. wait, I just feel like you're thinking about him from the perspective of like him being 20 years deep in the game. Nah, Imagine he's being not like bad, young and no, like getting no, no. a look Listen, like I'm that. I'm just not a bad. He don't deserve. Look, first of all, he don't deserve to get no hands put on him because he said, "I'm not no street nigga." Mm -hmm. He's like, "I'm not no street nigga. I'm not like that." Whatever the case may be. Now. Meek, go back to what Meek said, what was it, last year, where he said, I ain't gonna lie, that whole time I was bugging, I was getting mm -hmm. high, I was doing a bunch of shit at that time, right? So maybe they made a brass decision by niggas beating him up. He don't deserve to get beat up. Wait, he, what? I really wanna ask you, because, what? you know, again, in trying, to, in trying to, like, at least your initial thoughts mm -hmm. on this, when you say you're trying to get hot off it, I really wanna ask you, how could he have played this? You give me your version of events how he plays this, mm -hmm. where this turns out any different. I feel like everybody knew that he was someone that had to rely on his connections to the mm -hmm. industry because he had nothing. He so had nothing, I want to know what he got out of writing the letter. Because he, I, I, th th that's what, I, I want to know what he got out he of writing. I can tell you Drake that. happy no, at I the time. No, I can tell you that. I can tell okay. you that. Okay. Probably thought he would have another chance ditch, to write for him again. It was again. the last ditch effort. And he never, and he never seen him again. Go ahead. It's the last ditch effort to mm. try to save your only relationship with someone industry, right? And then, even then, that fractures and goes away. And now you're put in the middle of the thing. And, and again, I'm not even going to say because, you know, it, it's the classic what, what 50 said. What 50 said about, like, Wayne and, Wayne and Birdman, even though obviously yeah, Drake, Drake Wayne, and right. Meek's relationship ain't Wayne and Birdman, mm -hmm. but they were cool at one point mm -hmm. before the beef, right? Right. When you see them like playing ping pong, mm -hmm. when you see them like, you know, like, yo, like friendly bantering about like the Sixers and the Raptors, like I could imagine those are low points for this kid who, Absolutely. and again, at every point, and, and this is the only way I, where I identify with this, at for everybody who's ever made it, you're you've been a Quentin Miller in the, t in the sense of you have no connections, you mm. may have talent, but because you don't have a name, you hope you're not unfortunate enough where someone, when they're in the heat of fire, they sacrifice you like that. This is the first because time I've ever heard academics talk about humanity so every, on a show. So so yeah, it's a different so, action. So yeah, I like nobody, it. So Man. nobody's right here. Everybody sacrificed him in a sense. Like everybody, like, I feel yeah. everybody, everybody did I feel, him dirty. I felt everybody wronged him. I felt drama wronged him. Mm. You feel me? Because do you feel like some sort of apology is owed at this time, or do I you do. just okay? I do. But what does that do for him? It, it like, like if he gets, oh. a, I think that like if he gets an apology, if if somebody calls him or if me called him or whatever, what does that do for him? I'm glad you said that because you know as as I was thinking about this and and, and you know maybe just even this comparison might shock you a little at first when I was thinking like what is what is his next steps and what maybe his career could be. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, I, I, and like, I'm not no hypocrite. I'm not gonna sit here because today I'm having some humanity for him and just like fucking change my opinion. I don't think he's the greatest artist. I do think he's pretty dope at writing shit. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's good, right? he's really good. And, and when we think about people who may have not panned out all the way as artists, but they've panned out by helping behind the scenes, I think about Hitmaker. And of course, clearly Hitmaker had a whole, he was Young Bird, the 10th third, and he clearly had a whole repertoire and also, 
brand behind them before that happened. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, and this is, what, this is where the apology where you're saying come, mm -hmm. comes in, you know, at, this is 100% fact. If the biggest rapper in the world ain't fucking with you, mm -hmm. and then another rapper, if, if they're not fucking with you and you have nothing else, everybody else ain't gonna fuck with you. Because you know why? They don't want to, and you know this is a fact. Just like, if, if, if Cardi B don't fuck with like, even like, shit, even outside the music okay. industry, mm -hmm. Cardi B don't fuck with two strippers that she was beating up or whatever, mm -hmm. nobody else wanna you hire want, them. You, you know think why? Should be you don't wanna upset action. those people. All right, you so don't how upset. does it end? A public apology or a behind the scenes Niggas apology where he repairs. Press in, in right, a tweet. It could just be a tweet, or do you think it's a behind the scenes conversation and you feel like then he's no longer blacklisted by the industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hon yo, right. honestly. And then we should move no, no, on. No, I, I, Wait, I got one thing I want to say okay. once we done. Before this you, is, before this you, is a remedy, that. I feel. Okay. And, and I feel like with all the Goodwill stuff that Meek is doing, mm -hmm. this and third, like writing some of your wrongs is part of that too, bro. Okay. And and again, I'm not saying you're giving them a million. You you give somebody an opportunity because you definitely help cost them. And also, you know, dudes have egos. I'm not saying Drake is gonna come out. I can't even see Drake apologizing. You feel me? Because mm -hmm. it's gonna dig up a whole bunch of yeah. weren't like so. But I could see someone saying, "Hey, listen, you know what? I I identify with where he's at. Yo, you guys give him just give him an opportunity." All right, what's I the, think that's I'm just saying, what is, what is the opportunity? Because, again, I don't think that if if they did publicly apologize to him, everybody would say, all right, let's go sign Quentin Miller. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's it. Because he, he was like, yo, everybody just want to come to me and ask me for ideas for their artists. I think that's who he is. I don't think that, like, if, he, if, every, if Drake says, all right, it's not a problem no more, if Meek says it's not nothing no more, he goes and gets a deal and then becomes this big artist. I just think that... His opportunity comes with him writing with artists. I think that's what he does best. And I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but I think that's what he does best. But from what I'm hearing, what, what he was saying, it doesn't seem like he was saying, oh, they prevented me from being a star. He almost was painting the picture to say, they basically blocked any chance I had of being in this industry. Okay, so an apology, and hopefully he get back to writing for people, and then maybe pursue more of his solo work. We'll see. I think we could all agree it was a series of unfortunate events. We don't yeah. feel like Quentin deserves the way he's been treated. He's a very nice guy. Shout out to you, Quentin. Hope you feel Meek better. Mandela, though. That's, I, that's pretty funny. That was, <laughs> I call him Meek Mandela. Meek Mandela. Meek Mandela was funny. I hate that shit was mad funny. Um, all right, so on the topic of Meek Mill, 50 Cent has been doing the rounds. He was on The Breakfast Club last week, and he said around the time that Meek and Drake were beefing, he actually had a talk with Meek, and he had to exercise some self-restraint here. Take a look. Was Meek Mills, when, when I ran into him finally, he said, yo, come here, let me talk to you. I need to talk to you like a man on the side. Put me to the side. And he was talking, and I was looking at him, and I wanted to punch him. The stuff that he said, I wanted to punch him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I just looked at him and I was like, yo, I don't understand why you felt like that. You see what I'm saying? Because he, he was like, he's a battle artist. That's where you come from. Mm -hmm. So when he says something to Drake and then doesn't respond, and Drake says something back, I'm going, what happened? I was waiting for you. To, like, he was coming in the yet then mm -hmm. with that. And then you didn't say nothing back. And he was like, he felt like I was kicking him when he was dead. Hmm. All right, so of course people were talking about this. Eventually Meek did get on Twitter and responded. He said, it's not a coincidence all these people bringing my name up at once. I've been moving too right and certain people are not feeling it because most of these guys can't get in the room. So now I'm helping change laws and freeing people. Do you guys feel like this is a coincidence or not a coincidence? Um, it was just Quentin and, and 50, right? Nikki. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, yeah. Well, well I just don't feel like there's a correlation. Yeah, I don't either. I, I, I do feel like that, uh, I, I feel like Meek is definitely in a different path mm -hmm. in his life, but I don't think that necessarily some of the things that people are addressing about either their past dealings with him is trying to hold him back. Mm -hmm. You get me? Again, I do like, better for worse, like Meek is kind of like, like he still is like Twitter fingers do. Like, in the terms of he likes responding instantly. There are certain things you get beyond responding to. Like you don't see Jay responding to every Dame inter interview. That's in the past. And the past is still something that exists. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean people ain't gonna talk about it no more despite what you're doing now. So we see me doing a lot of positive things now. Um, he's admitted that some of the things in his past he was either tripping or, you know, maybe he would have dealt with differently or he's amended certain things but doesn't mean that people have their own versions of the story that they'll tell. I think, you know, sometimes 
you gotta let that ride. And, and, and I think there's maybe a small conflict there. That's why you see that this. But at least he's not like tweeting out or Instagramming fifty you a bitch, you know, like whatever, mm -hmm. and like going at him. But I think this is way of like dealing with that. But I, yeah, I think gonna he, have diversions. Meek understands that there's a lot on the line for him. I think even like that, he might somewhat regret that Nikki Twitter shit, right? Because it, it, where he's at in his career, where he's trying to go in his career, is just not no room for that. You know what I mean, I, 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 there's no room for that. Even like what you said with Jay, like Jay, I mean, first of all, Jay don't use social media at all. But I'm I'm pretty sure that that those Dame interviews probably bothered him, because mm -hmm. they would bother anybody to hear a former associate talk bad about you, you know, or your your personal dealings. I think that um, yeah, I don't think there's a correlation between anything that's going on, but it's just things that's in his life. The best way to overcome adversity is to keep going. But I yeah, I don't like the sh the shit that Fifty's saying. He's basically just saying like after the um. The, the shit with Drake, right? Like him him being a spectator. That's that's the thing. Like in, in hip hop, it might have felt personal for Meek, but we all spectators. Like I felt like Drake got the best of Meek with back to back, but I didn't like I didn't think he needed like I wouldn't joke on him for it, but like as conversation wise, yeah, he got the best of him. You know what's interesting? I don't even think that was an issue. I felt like Meek sent that tweet out because the way how 50 kind of said it in the interview was basically like, you know, you know, 50 someone, and, and Meek a little bit too, but like, 50 talks a lot from the place of aggression. So when he's like, yo, you would have punched him. You get me? I think Meek looks at that like. Do you think the portion of the tweet where he's talking about people can't get into those rooms, who is he, was he talking about 50 there? Nah, he not talking, I think he's talking about a lot of, I, I don't think it's, it's directed to one person, it's, it's more than that. But even what people, I think that particular tweet is talking about just everyone who who operates on the level of like just even beefing on Twitter and and and, and confrontation wise, yeah. like those rooms they could never get into. I think he realized how fortunate he is to be in those rooms. Yeah, absolutely. Given where he's come from, and he's like, y'all know y'all like y'all y'all would want to be here to have these other opportunities happen, but y'all won't. So y'all ain't about to trick me out of my shit. But, but it's a lot of that. things that play, come into play when it comes to Meek and 50. Like, you know, of course, 50 had his beef with Ross. You know what I mean? And, and uh, Meek, I mean, 50 still kind of fuck with Meek, but he had his beef with Ross. Meek fucks with Slow and Trav, and Slow and Trav have had their public shit with 50. You know what I mean? And, and I think it's, it's a lot of things there. I think it's just best for everybody to stay away, but I, don't, I, I think that Meek just needs to stay doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I, I also think he should stay off of Twitter too. Not seriously, he really needs to stay off of Twitter. Yeah, but, but, in that sense, like. But, but I think what you just described is is what proves my point. I think Meek probably listened to that. And wasn't that everybody had their opinions about that? And yeah. we've seen interviews that Meek did that people said it. But I think the way Fifty said it was kind of making him seem like a punk. Like yeah, yeah, when yeah, I confronted yeah. him, I could have hurt him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. That's a different. It was like yo, I could have hurt him. And when you start talking to people from certain type of environments, it was like, wait, so when, whoa, 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 you're rewriting the narrative, but he doesn't want to go down that rabbit hole in, in yeah. terms of saying, nigga, you're, you're tripping. Like, you must be on some other shit. Trying to even act like, yo, I was like some victim you could have just punched in the face. Like, that's not, ooh. that's why, that's what I believe. But um, who knows? Yeah. Shout out to Meek Mandela. <laughs> um, so last week we talked about Snoop Dogg um, sort of uh, snapping on Gail King for the question she asked about Kobe during that interview with Lisa Leslie. Eventually he did apologize. He said he spoke to his mother about it and realized he was raised better. Gail has since accepted his apology, so I like this. Uh, uh, she said she understood there was a lot of raw emotion put into that. So glad that episode is done. And now, moving on. Uh, so during a recent episode of Snoop's GGN show, he had Michael Rappaport with him. He actually gave props to Drake for, he said, quote, never missing uh, in battle or in controversy. He even goes on to say that he thinks Drake won against Pusha because of the success of In My Feelings. Check it out. When Drake first came out, I was like, he's just gonna be here and go in the mall. Cause I was like, I keep hearing, you know, the basic shit. Then I'm like, this motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. And then he just knows how to be a public relation type of motherfucker to shoot a video where he's passing out money and doing all kind of, come on, man. He learned from, all, like, he took all the smart shit that you guys did. Fuck. 
And, and you're right, because in the heat of battle, he don't fucking miss. Back <laughs> against the wall, push the tee, he don't miss. I mean, that motherfucker. Uh, the nigga made Kiki, do you love me, when yo. Pusha T took off on him. Took his fucking head off, he like, came back. Like, 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 you can have my head, but I'm going to have everybody in your family and everybody in the world singing this fucking Kiki, do you love me? Like, that's the answer. The answer is not I can't match you, lyrical, wop de wop whoop but you can't match me with this song that's going to play forever when they forget about that disc. And then with your birthday party for your daughter in four years, guess what they're going to be playing? Kiki, do you love me? And for her me? daughter to play that shit, that shit's a fucking... That shit's a fucking monster. That's why you can't, I, 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 cause I talk shit, you can't, what can I say about this motherfucker? He's we like, can't, we can't gotta give shit. him his. We gotta give him his, Drake is the shit. Drake, you the shit, I told you in your face, nigga. All right, what do you think about Snoop's take? We don't usually hear the legends giving props like this uh, loudly. I'm gonna be honest, well like. <sighs> What's up? Aubrey, if you're watching, cut it off right here. <laughs> <laughs> I want, like, I, I kind of don't, don't agree with Snoop at all. Which part? Wait, all of it? Well, well like, in essence, he's saying this very classic saying, especially when it comes to rap. And I, and I, I kind of, you know, I've thought so a couple times before, but this kind of epitomized it for me. I think I resent that, or I reject it, actually. I think that's the proper terminology. Mm -hmm. The terminology of you lost the battle, but you won the war. I don't think that happens in rap battles. Mm. Because you know what it is? It's like the more successful artist is still going to be more successful after the battle. Mm. So it's like base it's a consolation prize for for the fans of the popular rapper if they lose. You get me? Oh yeah, he lost battle, but of course he won the war. No. You get me like the the main fact is that when it came to the heat of the moment, when it came to confrontation, if you did not rise to the occasion, you took a loss there. The battle doesn't continue afterwards. Like, p w was Pusha supposed to compete with, with Kiki, do you love me? Was he supposed to compete with all the other pop songs? Was he supposed to compete with literally at least eight to nine years of pop success by Drake at that point? No, it's impossible. It's the consolation prize for the losers, which happens, it only works in one way. That's what I'm saying. Mm. It only works when you look at, it, when it's the popular artist or the more popular artist who lost. It also happened when people said, Jay, yo, Jay won the, he won the war, he lost the battle with Nas, of course, y'all got it, y'all got it, he got it, eat your eye, y'all Why didn't he say none of this shit <laughs> when, we, when all of this was going on? No, 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 hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Wait. I thought he was gonna agree hold with on. him. But, but, but they're like, oh no, Jay won the battle, Jay signed him, yo look, Jay dropped this after, no, no. Mm -hmm. Again, you can't, like, it's a false equivalency. You just can't compare what Jay did after that battle to what Nas is doing after that battle. Because it's not that a diss track or a defeat in a beef or whatever rap battle means y'all are now equal career-wise, which now we could then judge y'all on an even playing field going forward. And also, the artists are different. Um, uh, Pusha T don't make the same type of music that we see Drake makes. When, how you and I don't know right why y'all look surprised with this. Because you never said this shit before, that's why you, I feel what surprised shit? by this. What are you talking about? No, so look, no, look. A academics is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely right. I think that, like, of course, you, you can't. While Pusha has like great songs, he never is trying to even make those type of records that Drake is making. Right. He's never gonna have a hotline bling. Never gonna have like most of Drake's biggest records. But yeah, like. He won in a battle, like he did win in a battle, he beat Drake in a battle, but it's not even a, a conversation if after that it was gonna be a thing. Before, that's like the same shit with Lil Wayne. Of course Lil Wayne has records that everybody's gonna listen to at parties and this, that, and the third. That's not the type of artist Pusha T is, but for what he challenged them for, he stood the occasion. That's why I'm, I'm only tripping, because I'm like, dog, like, where, where was you all spent, of this like, at? five episodes talking about it. No, no, no. Yeah, like, where was, where was all of this at? Like, Hold on. You never, if, if you ever heard me make that point, oh, yo, Drake lost the battle, but he won. I've never said that. I've never <laughs> you said not, that. You haven't. No, no, I'm just no, saying. No, like, I, I, I just look at someone. More clarity. I, I look at someone as Snoop saying this. And by the way, we Snoop is the definition of a OG, mm -hmm. an aficionado yeah. of what this music shit is. And, uh, you know, that's his platform. But when, when we listen to Snoop, we are taking all of these things in the, in the context. And 
I do look at him even saying that as like, yo, we could celebrate Drake, what he's done before or after um, that beef or that battle with Pusha T without basically almost slighting Pusha T for not having the success that Drake had. Because it will never happen. Well, well, I think the message he was trying to get across got a little lost only because he started with saying that when he first heard Drake, he would be done, right? And there's tons of artists. Like, you know how many offices Drake went in that people didn't sign him? Like... So I think that's the point he was making and just giving Drake his flowers while he was here and he just threw that in there. That's the point he really was trying to get across that, you know, I didn't think that he'd be what he is today. And shit, a lot of people, shit, I didn't think Cardi B would be what she is today. That's usually how every success story uh, goes. So don't feel a way about it if people don't, don't fuck know. with you at first. Really? Yeah, very I don't few know. artists, people are championing you from the very, very beginning. Everyone has yeah, those yeah, years. Some, some people, I mean, I, I always talk you. about like, I seen Kendrick Lamar in Urban Plaza at Sneaker Pimps telling people, put your hands up and um, nobody's paying him attention. Mm -hmm. I, I, he actually, Kendrick Lamar opened up for Troy Ave one time. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's you a rite of passage. Rite of passage. Actually, we're gonna talk about, uh, we'll save this one for tomorrow, Kendrick and Big Sean. People thought they were beefing for a long time, but apparently, according to Sean, there's no issues. Stay tuned. Um, I do want to get your that. thoughts on. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on this last story before we go. So, according to Ski Master Slum God's DJ, which is DJ Scheme, he said Ski was reportedly supposed to appear on Justin Bieber's new album that's called Changes. He was supposed to be on a song called Running Over. So it seems like at the last moment ish, the verse was removed from the song and he was replaced with Lil Dicky. That's on the final cut. Uh, of course, Ski's unreleased verse eventually leaked. Then Scheme and Cole Bennett got on Twitter to give their take, um, kind of encouraging fans to criticize it. Scheme saying is absolute shit compared to what um, Ski did on it with Cole Bennett Bennett adding that it really irritating him. So according to Complex, uh, Ski turned in that verse last year. Bieber reached out to him directly. He found out a couple weeks ago that his verse would not make it. So it wasn't a complete surprise when the album dropped. Um, what do you guys think about their public reactions? People get cut from verses all the time. I'll be honest, and I do like Ski, I, th I thought it was whack. I thought, I thought it was whack how they were trying to make people hate on the song because they weren't included. And really, y'all are, like, are trying to have people hate because you're not invited in the club. This is the music business, and <clears throat> I listen to both versions. You're right, they're right, but it doesn't matter. Mm. Who gives a fuck who had the better verse? Those decisions make get made all the time. The yeah. mere fact that you could have someone like Kodak say, listen, I'm making a song with this motherfucker just for the streams. It could be for non-lyrical non or just superficial reasons why these people are making a song together. And like, there's nothing that says that Ski had to be on that song. Again, when you also put into uh, account that um, Lil Dicky's also managed by um, Scooter Braun, which also manages Justin Bieber, I would have probably said, fuck you, Ski Mask. I'm going to put the person that I manage on my song. <laughs> we don't give a fuck about your verse. And the entitledness of thinking that you had the dope verse. Everybody, Leak the song like everybody else does. That's what people do. This yeah. was, if, if, the, if everybody watching at home don't know, when people get upset that they, they, they didn't make whatever popular person's album, mm -hmm. but they turned in a really good verse, they leaked their version. Leak it. Great. Cool. But don't be just on Twitter criticizing it. You missed out on the check. It ain't coming. Won't come later. And to be honest, the way y'all act on social media probably won't be one in the future because I don't see Bieber really working with him again. Mm. I would imagine. So, you know, it, it didn't look too good in that perspective, but, you know, it's, it's a lot of times you see artists try to play off the emotions of just fans, which is just raw, like, hey, we want the best music, mm -hmm. when they know in the industry that's not exactly how shit goes down. And again, with all that said, I still love Ski Mask. I think he makes brilliant music, he raps really good, but I cannot defend this shit right here. That was a lot of academics. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I he didn't was like to be saving his voice today. I, I didn't right exactly. I didn't like even one of the verses. I don't like Lil Dicky's verse either. Uh -huh. You don't like Ski verse? No, I don't like his verse. You just said you didn't like it. Either. No, no, no. I did like it. You did like it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I didn't like. I didn't like even one of the <clears throat> verses. I don't know. It. I, I didn't like the. I don't know. I don't listen to Justin Bieber. Like the fuck. I don't listen. If you <laughs> if you listen to Dicky's verse and and Ski Ski Mask verse, it's mm -hmm. like imagine you get that. Gen it's like a generic verse. That that's what Dicky's verse is, and then you kind of hear like no disrespect to Ski, but you hear like that 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 Kendrick Lamar on like New Freezers. Like, yeah, but like, I, I feel I feel Ski to an extent too because that would have been like fucking 
big for him. You know what I mean? Like, that would have been massive for him to be on a Justin Bieber record, but... But is it worth ruining a future possible collaboration? Yeah, but that's why they took him off anyway. I, like, I, I got another reason it, why I it, think it, they it, took him off. I do. Yeah, I, I, imagine, right. imagine Trippy Red getting on getting online after he got removed from God's Plan. Man, that second verse of God's Plan is garbage, man. Why right. niggas took me off the song? I, I think that, well, you know, Bieber has been on his been coming out saying that he's been like trying to get away from drugs and off of drugs and all these different things. And I think that like, and this is no disrespect to Ski, but he's very open with drugs, like yeah. in his music, on his on his socials at one point in time. And I think that it probably was in a fit brand wise. Yeah. Changes, right? The album is about going through all of that growing exactly. up. Have you listened to it yet? Uh, his whole album? No. Yeah, okay. No. You still not a Bieber fan anymore? No. Or, no, I fuck with Justin Bieber Valley. I'm just saying, the weekend that a Boogie's album come out, I'm not listening to Bieber <laughs> Fair enough. We're going to talk about Artist 2.0 <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go check out our uh, interview with a Boogie from last week. Mm -hmm. That is our show for today. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Tweet us some questions at Everyday Shrug on Twitter with two Gs.